So a quick uh, intro for the video today is going to be very different. I'm going to be reviewing a few scientific papers that I've been reading recently. This is about how protein intake correlates with death and how longevity is related to how much protein you take, the percentage of protein uh, in your diet. So a lot of controversy here. I'm going to show you things about Ronnie Coleman and C.T. Fletcher. Um, a lot of different photos, a lot of different figures, things I've directly taken from the paper and literally read uh, the text of the paper so you know exactly what the paper says instead of something that I'm interpreting because I want you to understand that the science is very, very clear about what I'm saying. And I will come back at the end to review the, what I've told you in this video and uh, conclude. All right, see you soon. I want you to think, think about how much animal protein you ate last week. I want you to feel the moment when you had the best steak of your life. That moment, right after the knife cut the perfect piece and the fork made its heavenly journey from the plate toward your mouth, into your mouth, gushing with superb deliciousness as you bite and chew and your saliva marries with the barbecue sauce. Just hold that feeling as we go through this video. If you've been following the channel for a while, you know that I've been on a Whole Foods plant-based diet since July 2017. And I've even made several videos to express how I feel on this new lifestyle. Before going vegan, I collaborated with Zach one of my favorite mentors on the subject. Feel free to take a look at these videos to learn more about veganism. Today's video is about protein intake and its relationship to death. Since becoming a vegan and going on a plant-based whole foods diet, my protein intake has been strictly from plant sources. Moreover, the amount of protein I'm consuming is far less than what I ate on a meat, dairy, and eggs diet. Is this okay? I mean, what about C.T. Fletcher and Ronnie Coleman, who have apparently become so big and alpha, eating all that whey protein? What about all the ads, all those recommendations from GNC and other self-proclaimed fitness experts who claim that high protein intake is crucial for health? To get to the bottom of this debate, I have dug up the science and want to share it with you here. In 2015, this paper was published in Cell, one of the very best journals in all of medicine and science. The authors note very clearly that, and I quote, lowered intake of particular nutrients rather than of overall calories is also key, with protein and specific amino acids playing prominent roles, end quote. Now, take a look at a figure from the same paper. If you follow this flowchart from dietary restriction at the top to selective amino acid restrictions and all the way down to health and longevity, you will notice that some of the cellular and molecular mechanisms which may be involved, including DNA and tissue repair, reducing inflammation and increased resistance to stress. Let's move on. This figure reiterates the importance of reducing protein intake. Again, you'll notice that protein intake is in its own category, apart from the more general principle of reducing caloric intake, also known as a caloric deficit. Let me quote again from this paper. Dietary guidelines from the medical literature and popular press often promulgate high protein intake, especially from animal sources rich in essential amino acids, including sulfur-containing and branched chain to combat obesity, sarcopenia, osteoporosis, frailty, surgical stress, and mortality. However, accumulating evidence points instead to a restriction of protein or specific amino acids in the diet as promoting health span. Next, we will dig even deeper and look at a few papers which were cited in the reference section of this paper. Here, the authors published in Trends Endocrinology Metabolism in November 2014 and investigated the role of protein restriction in human aging and disease, 
Overall, as you see in the abstract, they conclude that, and I quote, in humans, protein restriction, PR, has been associated with reduced cancer, diabetes, and overall mortality. Thus, interventions aimed at lowering the intake of proteins or specific amino acids can be beneficial and have the potential to be widely adopted and effective in optimizing health span, end quote. So, could it be that the health problems we see with bodybuilders such as C.T. Fletcher and Ronnie Coleman have something to do with their diet? I don't know the answer to this, but I would guess that what they ate was a huge factor in what is happening in their life as we speak. Ronnie has had two hip replacement surgeries and C.T. Fletcher, according to inside information I have from his doctors, may die in the next few years. Now, keep in mind, I did not speak to his doctors directly. This is information that I gained while I was at strength camp. And now it is widely known, so I am telling you and disclosing it in full authenticity here. Why do you think CT made that Netflix documentary and is trying to do more self-development and legacy type work in the past few years after his diagnosis? Look, I am friends with both of these guys, as well as many other bodybuilders and fitness celebrities out there, but I would warn them and you from high protein intake. I love them and love you all. I mean no harm. Just want to spread the word which has been buried deep for decades. Don't take my word for it. Just read the studies I talk about here and cite in the description below. Now let's see some more science from the paper we are discussing. Let me quote more from the paper. On page two, the authors state that proteins have the most impact on the effects of caloric restriction and dietary restriction. DR refers to restriction of one or more macronutrients with or without reducing calories on aging and diseases based on the observations that restriction of proteins or certain amino acids has been associated with extended longevity and reduced incidence and or progression of multiple age-related diseases. Also, there is a, and I quote, positive correlation with, be, between the high intake of animal-derived protein and adverse long-term side effects that manifest as chronic and aging-related disease, and the 65 and younger group reporting consumption of over 20% of calories from proteins had a fourfold increased risk of cancer mortality and a 75% increase in overall mortality compared to subjects consuming less than 10% of calories from proteins. Instead, in a plant-derived protein source diet, the association between high protein intake and mortality was abolished, whereas that on cancer mortality was attenuated. Similarly, in, in a multivariate analysis of an NHS co uh, cohort, which recorded 2,210 cases of non-fatal infractions and 952 deaths from coronary heart disease, investigators found a direct correlation between the risk of heart disease among women, and an increase in red meat and high-fat dairy intake. In contrast, a, a lower risk was associated with high intake of nuts, beans, and low-fat dairy. Metadata analysis of the NHS cohort also suggests a correlation between high consumption of red and processed meat and increased risk of colorectal cancer. Furthermore, a study evaluating a multi-ethnic cohort of 29,759 Caucasian, 35,244 Japanese American, and 10,509 Native Hawaiian men and women in Hawaii aged 45 to 75 years at baseline indicated a positive correlation between red and processed meat intake and increased risk for diabetes. Similar to the observation for U.S. cohorts, a cohort of 43,396 Swedish women, a 1 in 10 decrease in carbohydrate intake or a 1 in 10 increase in protein intake was associated with statistically significant increase in incidences of cardiovascular disease. 
What about some practical proof with regard to living populations who are healthy in old age? Let's get to it. Here you see that their diet is comprised of, and I quote, three small meals comprised of small amounts of carbohydrates and meat and large amounts of seasonal fruits and vegetables, beans, olives, and olive oil. And similar to the centenarians, centenarians in southern Italy, studies of one of the longest lived populations in the world, the Okinawans, during the 1950s, reveals a dietary regimen rich in vegetables, fruits, grains, and soy products with only 9% of calories coming from proteins mostly plant-based. Moreover, the diets of some of the longest-lived populations from around the world are mostly plant-based, low-protein diets. And, and I quote, In conclusion, we have presented evidence ranging from invertebrate, mammalian, and primate model organisms, epidemiological findings, and human studies that show a clear link between protein and amino acid intake, the activation of pro-aging and disease-promoting pathways, and the incidence of age-related diseases and reduced lifespan. In particular, high consumption of proteins from red meat and other animal sources appear to be associated with a wide range of diseases. Here is the final figure from this paper. See for yourself the difference between the far left and the far right. Ignore the middle unless you are interested in the molecular mechanisms of it all. Now let's look at the final paper we will review today. This one is published in 2012 in the journal Aging Cell. As we notice right away in the abstract, and I have also highlighted this part, and I quote, Surprisingly, the proportion of protein intake was more important for life extension via dietary restriction than the degree of caloric restriction. This study also reports that, and I quote, a series of recent studies, however, suggests that the balance between macronutrients, the ratio between proteins and carbohydrates, is more important than caloric restriction. Furthermore, we see once again that, quote, Although there is indirect support for the effect of protein restrictions in humans, it seems that both caloric and protein restriction may play a role in promoting life exten extension, life extension by dietary restriction. Let me finish by reading two of their conclusions here. One, dietary restriction is generally more effective at increasing female longevity than male longevity. And two, the balance between protein and caloric restriction is a key factor to maximize the effect of dietary restriction in extending lifespan. Hey, what's up? I'm back. Uh, I hope you like this paper. Comment below. Let me know what do you think about this sort of format, this sort of structure, because what I want to do is start reviewing uh, very good, very well done studies uh, that show things that are very controversial and very much not aligned with, with what we've been taught by the fitness industry, what we've been taught by advertisers and, and things that we just see in uh, Facebook ads. <laughs> uh, so comment below, let me know if you like this structure, if you like this sort of format that I've been doing, how can I make it better? I would love your feedback. Uh, like this video, you know, give me your th thumbs up if you got something out of it. Share it with your friends. Uh, if they can get something out of it and subscribe to the channel, uh, if you want to receive notifications for future videos. Also, make sure you look at the description below in YouTube because uh, there are going to be links there to the studies that I have talked about in this video and to exclusive content which includes free ebooks that I've written recently all for you for free to read about testosterone, about health and fitness, about losing weight, uh, about gaining muscle, about masculinity, all sorts of material that I have spent years and years researching and learning about and, and experiencing in life through mentors and through my travels. So make sure you read the description below and click on those links. And that's it for this video. I will see you tomorrow. There will be more videos coming this week uh, regarding intermittent fasting, the science behind all of that, 
And if you want to know more about protein intake, if you have any questions on the papers that I cited here or on some of the things that I said personally in this video, please ask me those questions and I will answer them in the next video or in the videos to come in the future. This is Farhan. I will see you soon. Take care.